Okay, here are five ways you can make your photos better without spending a single dollar or even having a camera. The first one is to eat a cupcake because eating cupcakes, everyone knows. A bit raw, it's still a good cupcake. The first thing I wanna talk about is to shoot with better angles. And what I mean by this is, let's say you have a big building in front of you, but you know, instead of just holding your phone out like this, just shooting from chest height like any tourist would, right? Even if you're not a photographer, you wanna make sure that your photo comes out cool. I'm sure you want it to come out cool. So in order to make a big thing feel big, choosing the right angle, meaning shooting from, let's say, low angles, even with your phone for that matter, is gonna make that big building feel huge. Bottom line, the angle that you shoot a photo at will help give an impression or emotion that you're trying to convey through the photo. Shooting at a good angle, thinking about the angle you're shooting at only takes another five to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and then you actually have a better photo come out of it just because you stopped, thought about where you were and what you were trying to do, and then thought about what you could do to make it a little bit better. The next thing I want to point out is to just use lighting to your advantage. A lot of us don't understand lighting, a lot of us are scared of lighting, and a lot of us don't have Lights. Lighting, but that's nothing to stop you from making the most of what you do have. Right now, I'm using this window to diffuse my light instead of getting a whole big setup with lights going on. I have one light just for a little bit of fill. If you're gonna be shooting at night and you don't have a good camera that can get good photos at night, you probably shouldn't shoot at night until you're able to use the lighting that you have around you to make sure the photo comes out good. What I'm really trying to say here is that use the lighting you have to your advantage. So prioritize your lighting, make sure you have it. Don't shoot when you don't have light. My tip number three, my point number three is to shoot through an object. And what I mean by that is let's say you're in the city and you see a building or uh, some architecture piece that you really like, right? And you're trying to make sure your photo both stands out from the crowd and that you like it and it's just a little bit more compelling. Well, maybe if you have like a fence across the street from this object, right? Instead of just standing in the street and taking the photo, you know, like you could like this, you actually go behind that fence and you shoot through the fence and, you and use the fencing itself to frame your subject in like the center of the frame or in a different part of the frame, but you use it to lead the viewer, their eyes to that part of the frame to see the subject matter that you're trying to show off. This technique of shooting through things, whether it's leaves or shooting over someone's shoulder, you give the audience a sense of environment. It also helps just lead the audience's eyes where you want them to go and that helps people understand and like your photo better. Not to mention, it just looks visually better when you have a little bit more going on in a photo. Point number four rolls off the other three and that's to think outside of the box. Think about what everyone else is doing. So if you go to a tourist trap, right? You're going to a tourist town or just some place that you already know. And everyone takes a photo of this, you know, object, the subject, the same way. Well, everyone's photos are gonna look the same. No one's gonna care about your photo if you do the same thing. So how can you both make sure that like, you know, whoever sees your photo thinks it's a good photo and that you also like the photo and that it's just unique. Make sure that what everyone else is doing, you're doing something differently. I live in Charleston, right? And there's a lot of churches around here that people take photos of a lot and they all look pretty similar. They all look pretty much the same. But if you go ahead and think like, okay, if everyone's doing this angle of this church, let's say, can I get a different angle of that church to make sure that that photo, you know, looks a little bit better? So instead of shooting something like this that everyone else takes, regardless of how good the photo looks as a quality standard, what if I shot it from this angle or through this object or behind this thing or so all these points that I'm bringing all cumulatively matter in terms of taking a better photo without having to buy an extra thing or spend an extra dollar. It's all about giving it a little bit more thought, minute walking around to get a better shot than you could have if you didn't think about it. If you just pulled your phone out or pulled your camera out and took a photo. And the last thing I wanna mention is like, specifically with objects or like product photography is framing in your subject. So if you are out and about and you're taking photos of like, let's say an object, think about what makes that object interesting. What makes that object exist? So if you're in a coffee shop or you're having a cup of coffee at home, put some coffee beans around it, put some coffee grinds around it, whatever you gotta do. So people's eyes are directed at the cup of coffee rather than anything else. And because these things are on the edges, because these things are already there and maybe you shot through them, they're not gonna be paying attention to those other objects, but it will help the cup of coffee look more interesting rather than just putting it on a counter, taking a photo and walking out the door or, or whatever. This is if you care, obviously, about your cup of coffee, but this is just an example of an object or a situation in which it might help to have some better framing. Now, if you take all five of these tips and you push them together, you're gonna to get a lot better of a photo or a lot better opportunity to take a good photo at least if and when you decide to use these tips. Each one only takes about 10 to 15 seconds probably to think about. I hope this helped you. I hope you guys got something out of this. And no, of course, I did not come up with this idea to share these points. I think these are general points that a lot of photographers already think about naturally. But to those of you who aren't one or are still learning, I hope this helped you. And I hope you guys found some value in it. I will see you guys in the next video. 
two videos this week. That's good. That's good. Okay. Goodbye.